When developing a game, you'll probably start by working on your controls, movement, and general gameplay. And once that all feels just right, that's the time to start working on creating some levels. I posted a video before, which I'll link in the corner, about how I build levels for my games, but I haven't discussed how I design them. I personally find level design to be the single most difficult aspect of game development. I can come up with and code some cool mechanics, but creating an environment that complements those mechanics is pretty challenging. You have to consider what part of the gameplay is the most fun, and really lean into that. For example, the game I'm currently working on is a platformer where you go faster by defeating enemies. The fun part of the game is going fast, and working in lots of dive combos to keep up the pace, while also maneuvering around hazards. So I make sure to shape my levels around that, and keep anything that slows things down to a minimum. And this mentality has really changed how the game is structured as a whole. Originally, I was planning to make this game have an exploration component, where each level has hidden things to find and different collectibles to pick up. This ended up being bad for the gameplay, since it incentivized players to slow down and look for stuff, rather than highlighting what actually makes the game fun. So now, I restructured the game so that instead of finding collectibles, you earn them by completing time trials within each level, which is an even bigger incentive to get through levels very fast. Even though I'm now aware that my levels should be linear, with a focus on speed, it's still hard to get a level designed. It's daunting to know that I need to come up with a map that's around 500 tiles wide, and I'm just here staring at an empty canvas. This is when I decided to adopt a very common productivity tactic into my design process. When you have a large task, break it down into smaller subtasks, and if possible, break those subtasks down into even smaller ones. In general, not just game development, it can feel overwhelming having to envision your final product all at once. So making things more bite-sized gives you a clear path into achieving the end goal. Applying this to my level design works like this. Each level normally has about three maps, so I can make each map their own task. The next step is breaking down a map into smaller bits, and this is where I really got creative in how I designed my levels. At first I tried just building the map from left to right, coming up with ideas as I went, but that ended up creating some very uninspired levels. Instead, before I put anything into my map editor, I come up with a bunch of small pieces. I'll grab my notebook and just draw up some very small sections of a level. At this point, I'm not thinking about where in the map these pieces will go. Instead, I'm just thinking about different scenarios that would work well for that level's gimmick. For instance, the gimmick of this level is that the flying enemies can now move horizontally. Once I have a good list of a bunch of pieces, I start putting them together. The order here is important, because I need to consider how the gimmick is introduced, where the checkpoints should go, and how the map should get progressively more difficult the farther the player gets in. At this point, I have the general outline for the level, and this is when I actually start working with the map editor. During this process, I draw the platform objects, but I do not place any tiles yet. Since the level layout can shift and change a lot during this phase, it would be annoying having to constantly remove and redraw all the tiles whenever I shift things around. Once I get a piece drawn in, I'll actually play the game to see how it feels. As you can see, there are no tiles yet, but I turned on some debug drawing so I can see the platforms. Testing each piece is important to make sure the size of the platforms makes sense, if anything is too easy or difficult, and just to verify that all the objects were placed correctly. Once this piece looks good in-game, I go back to the editor and map in the next piece. And at this point, the process repeats. I test out the level up to that point, make any adjustments, and move on to the next one. Sometimes I'll come up with new piece ideas on the fly, and sometimes I'll realize the outline has some pacing issues that require shifting things around. All of this is figured out by testing. And eventually, I'll have a complete map. At this point, I've played through the whole map and I'm comfortable with the layout. Since this is the case, I'm ready to take the time to place in all the tiles. What's nice about the tiled map editor is that if I ever need to make adjustments to the tile art, I just need to replace the PNG file for that tile set, and the map will get updated automatically so I don't have to replace everything. Once all the tiles are placed in, I get the satisfaction of playing through the whole map in all its glory. 
and from there I just start the process again with the next map of the level. Overall, I highly recommend this piece-focused method of level design. It's fun to come up with little ideas for a level, but it's not so fun to try and come up with an entire level all at once. Breaking down any large task into smaller tasks is generally a good idea, pretty much with anything you work on, and it definitely holds true here. I hope you found this video helpful, and if so, please hit the like button, I'd greatly appreciate that. Also, I post game development content like this every single week, so be sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more. Thanks so much for watching to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.